welcome to day 23 of Vlogmas. I am refilling our crock pot potpourri. I made that in, or the boys and I made it, in a video. I don't remember what day that was. But anyway, it smells so good and it still smells good. Um, sorry, the light's weird. I just have to kind of remember to keep adding water to it. Let me flip you guys around so you can see it. Um, I have my water bottle and everything out here. Let's see. Yeah, so here it is. It still smells really good every time we put water in it. It looks really like burnt. It doesn't look pretty at this point, but it still smells like apple pie. Anyway, day 23 of Vlogmas. Um, Isaiah and I just got back from the store. He had to run in and grab some bread and chips for us for lunch because I'm going to do hot ham and cheese sandwiches. And this was his first time going in by himself getting stuff and paying for it. So he did a great job. Um, he bought two bags of chips instead of one, but you know, whatever. <laughs> anyway, uh, today I'm not getting up to much. We do have like a Christmas, um, Christmassy celebration kind of thing at our church's youth group later. Um, so that'll be later this evening. We're gonna have pizza and stuff there. Um, so I don't have to worry about dinner. Lunch is gonna be quick and simple. Um, I have taken off for like the rest of the year for the holidays. I'm trying to not do very much, if any, work stuff at all. No social media posts, no blog posts. I mean, I am still doing Vlogmas, but not anything to work related, I guess, to herbal related. <laughs> anyway, because I just need a break. Um, and I like to take the end of the year off. It feels good to do that. But today, um, I thought I would go through my herbal apothecary and get rid of old herbs um, that are kind of too old to use at this point and compost those and decide which ones I'm going to purchase more of and then which herbs I need to order that I don't have in stock. Um, I have a 15% off coupon code for Mountain Rose Herbs. That's one of my favorite places to buy herbs online. They have a huge selection of organic herbs, um, wild crafted kind of things like that. And I, um, I want to use that before the end of the month and then I can't use it anymore because my birthday's tomorrow. This is my birthday month. You get a 15% on coupon code on your birthday month. Um, and I just need to put that so to use. The boys are outside playing and <laughs> Charlie's trying to bite the, um, tripod. Come here, Charlie. Um, the boys are outside playing, so I'm going to try to get this done pretty quickly. Um, come here, you'll say hello. Say hello, Charlie. Hi. Oh, you just want to bite my ears. Um, I'm gonna try to get my, go through my apothecary really quickly um, and pull out things that I think I need to get rid of, see what I still think I can keep, and then leave it, don't bite, don't bite, leave it. Um, and then make a list of things that I'm gonna order for Mountain Rose Herbs. All right, um, so when we lived at our house in the mountain, I had a big closet full of herbs. That's where I kept all my stuff, but here, I have this big cabinet that looks into our dining room and I wanted all of the shelves to look really nice and be um, like hold my herbal books and just kind of be like a nice looking thing. But I had these cabinets down here and I decided to stick all of my herbs down here because it blocks the light really well. Um, our family room is on one side and our living room is on the other side and they are full of windows. So lots of light get into those two rooms. But since this like dining room kitchen area is in the middle, it doesn't get a ton of direct sunlight, which is perfect for my herbs. So, I have two cabinets. I pulled some of the jars out over here already and they're sitting here on the floor. And so I've got the herbs labeled um, and they start from A and they go all the way down to Z on this end, which I don't think I have any herbs that start in Z. Anyway, um, so I've got everything in alphabetical order. That makes it easy for me to find stuff. And some of these herbs I've had for a long while, other herbs I have replaced, like the labels are starting to look kind of yellow because they were made so long ago. Um, and then other herbs I have wild crafted around our property and I've like replaced them. So um, I need to go through and decide what I'm gonna keep, what I'm gonna get rid of. So if I'm trying to get rid of certain things, it's basically because I wanna save some space and I don't use that plant very often at all and it's not worth me keeping such a large amount of it um, or it's old and the way I'm going to tell if it's old is if it doesn't have a scent or a flavor anymore. Now some of the ones that I al already pulled out like this arnica flower 
Arnica is a super, super fluffy herb. So I think I ordered a half pound and I keep it in this gallon size jar. And I love Arnica for skincare products. It's not something that you use internally, but it's really great for joints and bruising. And it's a very strong flavor. I have had this for so long. I don't, I don't remember. I feel like I've reordered this one time, but it smells really strong. Like it's very fragrant. So I know that this herb is not one to get rid of because even though I feel like I've had it a long time and you know, if I were more on top of things and I were, I should probably do this going forward is like keeping like a list of everything that's in my apothecary and writing down the date that I bought it. Um, but I've never done that because I don't know, I just didn't start off doing that and I, I haven't done it. So I don't know when I actually purchased this herb last, but it still smells really strong. So I'm going to keep it. Same thing with this alfalfa. I actually need to put those back in. That smells, it smells good. It smells grassy. It's not as strong as the, um, as the, um, arnica, but maybe it's not supposed to smell that strong. Alfalfa is like a cover crop. So it has like a real hay, like grassy smell which this does, it's not super strong. Um, and I like to use alfalfa in um, like nutritive infusions that I drink mostly in the spring and summer. So I'll probably just keep this and double up on the alfalfa in any recipes that I make and then just order a fresh batch because I, I will go through this. Well, I will need to use the rest of that. So on my list, I'm just gonna write down alfalfa so I know to order it. And I'm not gonna order a large amount, maybe like eight ounces of it, but I may use that pretty quickly, so I don't know. Anyway, um, so some of these powders, I actually don't even know why I bought half of these powders. I don't know what I intended, if I was gonna make like capsules out of them, but I'm not a big capsule person because it's just, I don't feel like you absorb as much of the herb in capsules. I would rather make like the little nut butter kind of balls and eat them, eat powdered herbs more because your body breaks it down faster than in a capsule. But I've got this butcher broom root. Um, this would have been for like blood vessel, like why I would have bought it for blood vessel strength. Um, and then I've got this Indian gooseberry um, amalekai. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce that. Anyway, I've got this powder. Um, this one is a really great source of vitamin C. It's full of antioxidants. Um, yeah, so it's really good. And anyway, I bought these at Bulk Herb Store a long time ago but I've never opened them. So they actually have like um, a heat seal on them and you can see like they have not been broken. So even though it's a powder and even though I haven't kept it in the freezer, because powders will degrade faster. So whenever you have herbs and you're worried about shelf life, the main concern is keeping them out of direct sunlight because the sunlight will degrade the plant material and faster if it's a powder um, and oxygen. So now my cabinet stays in the dark all the time. So all of these are totally out of direct sunlight and they're sealed pretty well. So like these um, lids, which are dirty, they're super dusty, I need to clean them, but they have that seal on them. Um, and so a lot of times, like when I go to open the herbs, I have to pop this lid off, I have to pop that, which I've already opened this one. But you can see it's got this little rubber piece and that helps to seal it really well. And the more full, the fuller <laughs> your jar is, then the less oxygen is taking up space in your jar and then the less that can um, degrade the the um, herbs in the jar. So like this is bilberry, bilberries, and there obviously is more room for oxygen in this jar. So this herb would last longer because there's less space for oxygen than this one. And I actually heard Rosemary Gladstar one time say, I think this was in her course, Rosemary's Remedies, which I purchased from Learning Herbs a long, long time ago. Um, she was showing her apothecary and she was talking about how um, like herbs that she doesn't use as frequently as others, when they get low like this, she'll actually transfer them to a smaller jar so that she doesn't have all this airspace. I feel like she was the one that said that. Um, <laughs> Charlie's in there barking. Anyway, um, so these I'm gonna keep because they have this heat seal on them. So I am confident that these herbs are still potent. Um, they have not been in light, they haven't been exposed to oxygen, and so I think that they're good. But now, if you look at these powders right here, they are lighter in color, and I know they're old because I remember when I bought these, and it has been, it's, it's been years and years and years. Um, 
and there's a lot of airspace in these jars. So I don't think that these are going to be really great for using for their, you know, therapeutic qualities. The reason I bought these powders was I used to make natural paints for the boys. I called them earth paint. And so I would use beetroot powder for like a reddish pink and I used the bilberry powder for a purple. We had um, spirulina for green. I did, I think turmeric for like a yellow or orange color. I can't remember what else I used. Anyway, I wrote a guest blog post on DIYnatural.com for the earth paint and that post is still up there if you're interested, if you have little kids and um, you just wanna make some sort of like natural paint because when my boys were little, they would get paint all over them. And we had this big Melissa and Doug easel and I would just set it up outside in the summer and I would have their little cups of all their earth paint and they would just paint and they would be a mess and then they would go play in the little kiddie pool in the front yard <laughs> and get cleaned off. And so um, that's when I bought all of these things because I remember making those paints and then doing that guest post. So it has been a long time. And you can see it looks like this beetroot powder, it looks like rocks in here because I just, I haven't used it in so long. Um, so those two things I'll probably get rid of. I also have some aloe vera powder. I know I used this in some sort of skincare thing once, but I can't remember what it was now. Maybe it was something I used to sell in my Etsy shop. Anyway, I've not used it in forever. It still smells really strong. And actually when I went to open it, I had to, I had to pop the seal off. Whew, that is really strong. <laughs> it makes me wanna cough. It's, yeah. Anyway, I may keep that. I don't know if I'll use it. Maybe it's just taking up space. I'm not really sure. Um, but none of this stuff, I need to replace. I'm gonna use the last of these bilberries because I'm gonna make like a vitamin C, um, like infusion kind of tea. Hey, you stop eating that. Oh, Charlie. Um, I'll make like a vitamin C infusion with those, but once they're gone, they're gone. I'm not gonna order more and replace them. So, with all of that said, um, let me think of anything else I want to tell you guys. Like these, little bags here. I don't know if you can see these. These are in like brown paper bags. This is juniper leaf and juniper berries. I actually had a friend who lives in the Southwest. She wild harvested these for me. This was back before our, we had our own juniper um, bushes up on the mountain. And then she also got me some chaparral. Oh, I love this herb. It's not local to me. Oh, it smells so good. And whenever I open my herbal apothecary, when this is fresh, it smells so strong of chaparral and I love it. That's like one of my favorite herby smells. <laughs> um, some people think it stinks, but I really like it. And I'm the same way with valerian. Like a valerian root, it stinks. I think it smells worse when you're actually making stuff with it, but I actually like the smell of valerian root. It has like this weird perfumey smell and I just, I like it. So I'm weird like that. Um, anyway, so I'm gonna go through here. I think these probably need to be replaced because they're in paper bags and oxygen can get through the paper bags pretty easily. I do think she, no, she didn't double bag them, but they were all wound up and they were taped. And honestly, I do not use my juniper leaf or berry all that much. I have used them a little and I think I have a tincture of them, but it's just not something that I use a ton of. Um, I know it's really great for the urinary system. Um, and I think it's a conifer, so it's probably got some antimicrobial properties, but there are just other herbs that I use more frequently than these. So I don't even know that I will replace them. Let me smell. This is the greens. It doesn't even smell as strong anymore. So I'm thinking that these are probably not really worth keeping. If I were to start using juniper a little bit more, those don't smell at all. I would either just harvest some myself to use and decide if it was something I wanted to stock up um, but now chaparral for sure. I definitely need some more of this because I am kind of running low and I do use chaparral. It's funny, I actually use chaparral more than I use like golden sill and golden sill is local to the Appalachian region. Um, and we, I know people who, um, who cultivate it and you know, I would buy it that way because I don't wild harvest it because it's way up in the mountain. And I'm normally not up there looking for goldenrod, or I mean not goldenrod, golden sill. And um, usually when you find it, you don't find like massive, huge, big patches. Um, but they are doing a lot of work in the Appalachian region, um, trying to have people learn more about cultivating these at-risk plants like golden sill um, and some of the others like bloodroot and things like that that grow plenty, well, I say plentifully. I feel like most of them are like ginseng, like I, we see a bunch of that here, but I guess in some parts of Appalachia, 
it's not as prevalent, I guess. And people do over harvest these plants, so they are at risk and we don't want them to be gone. So they're trying to teach people in this region to actually cultivate and grow it. Um, and then we sell it that way. So if I were to go to Mountain Reserves and I were to buy one of those, it would be a cultivated source. It wouldn't be like wild harvested. Okay, so I'm gonna put chaparral on my list. And let's see what else. Okay, here's something like blessed thistle. I don't even, I don't use this herb very often, so I don't know why I bought this much. Shoo, I should not have shaken that before I breathed that in. It smells really strong, it smells really good. Most of these, <laughs> this was so gross. Don't shake these jars and then breathe them in. So most of these have like a seal inside of this lid. It's like a little rubber seal. And so I feel like when I tighten them down and I keep them in there, it does keep oxygen from getting in, but you know, you've got the oxygen in the jar. So here's the burdock root. I do use that. Um, Astragalus root, I've been using a ton of that. Activated charcoal is a powder, but that's not gonna go bad. I can keep that. Um, let's see, cardamom powder. Black walnut hole. Okay, I know why I bought this and I don't use this at all. This was like a, I was doing a parasite thing once. Oh, oh boy, that stuff is stanky. Hey, okay, so I also have this basket full of these little bags of herbs. These are like little one ounce bags that I picked up at local herb shops or I have bought from this bulk herb shop. They sell one ounce bags of like organic and wild crafted herbs. When I need like powders and I don't want to buy a large amount of a powder, I'll order from them. Um, so yeah, I just need to kind of go through here and see how much I have and of what, see what it is and decide what I'm going to keep and what I'm not going to keep. So I'm going to spend some time going through here and adding to my list and compost what I'm not going to keep and then go place an order with Mountain Reserves for what I want to order. Maybe if I need little bits of something from the bulk herb shop, I'll order those things too. So we'll see. to show you guys that on this side of my apothecary I have a bunch of herbal tinctures that are these are all finished this is where I put them when they're like processing like macerating they're just sitting with the herbs and the alcohol um, and you're supposed to come and shake them every day but I don't because I'm lazy and I forget about them but that's okay you don't have to um, the alcohol is still going to extract the properties from the herbs I also don't stay on top of I guess dates really specifically with my tinctures. You're supposed to let them sit for about six weeks and then they should be finished, but I just leave mine. Like I just let them sitting longer with the herbs in the alcohol. And whenever I need to put them in their bottles or refill a bottle from my little, I guess, I don't know what. This is where I store all my herbs, but I keep all my herbal preparations in a cabinet. I'll show you the guys that in a minute. Um, I've shown this cabinet before in other videos. Um, but all of the finished products go over there and that's really the apothecary. That's where I go and get everything that we need whenever we need it. Unless I need dried herbs, then I come here to get them. But anyway, so I've got all of these tinctures. These are just random old jars, jelly jars that I make these tinctures in. Um, this is a yellow dock tincture. This is a yarrow tincture. Lobelia running low on certain things. Calendula, I know it was out of that, so I remade that. Goldenrod, Oregon grape root, Echinacea. This is um, actually an Usnea oil. I've never strained that. I just leave that sitting in there too. <laughs> um, bone set. A bunch of these I made when the coronavirus stuff started coming out, like in March, I guess. I just checked all of the things that I have, like all of the tinctures that I had already made and decided what I needed to stock up on in case we needed it. And so I just went ahead and went through all of my herbs and made tinctures with the things that I didn't have. Chaparral, I actually don't know if I've ever made a chaparral tincture, but anyway, I have one now. This one is Whorehound, really good for coughs, really good in tea or syrups. It tastes very bitter, very, very bitter. So that you can actually just use this as a bitter before your meals. 
It's really good for that. Um, what is this? I covered this name up. Catnip. All right, so, and then I've got an, another herbal oil. This is like a body oil that's just been sitting in here forever. It's a bunch of flowers, herbal flowers for that. Yeah, and then my scale. So um, I've cleaned the tops off of all of my herb jars and I've gone through and I've got a pile here, mostly powders that I'm gonna get rid of that I don't need anymore. Some of the powders, I'm actually gonna go and make something with them to use them up. Um, and then I need to decant these and put them in jars or little bottles and put them in my actual apothecary. So I may try to get to that in just a second too, we'll see. And I have a list here of herbs that I usually keep on hand that I am out of and I need to replace. And then I'm also going to look through um, Mountain Rose Herbs website and see if there's anything extra that I want to order. Like there are, as I'm going through uh, my herbal studies with the School of Evolutionary Herbalism, we're going like body system by body system. And there are always things like he'll mention something and I'm like, oh, I need that. Like I don't have that herb. And I'm not big on buying like every herb out there or I would run out of room, but I really want to buy like small amounts of specific herbs that I'm curious about so that I can use them and see what I think. Um, and then maybe I would buy like a larger amount, but I need to buy little one ounce bags of some of these herbs that I've never used before that I'm learning about for these body systems that I'm studying so that I can use them and get some experience with them. So, yeah. All right, so here, let me back up so you guys can see. This is my, where I keep all my finished herbal products and some things that I buy. Um, so down here, you know, I've got some salves and I've got things that I buy from other places. Um, and then I've got a lot of syrups there. I did a video on shelf stable herbal syrups. I'll link to that in the description below if you're curious. These, are tincture blends that I use for certain things. And these are single tinctures. So they're individual herbs in tincture form. And I pull those and I blend those up to create these right here <laughs> when I need them. Um, yeah, and then this is a salve I made, but I'm gonna get low on that. I need to make some more of that too. So yeah, anyway, this is my apothecary. So I'm gonna go through here and see what I can refill from the tinctures that I have in my cabinet over there and if I don't have a tincture already up here then I will come down here I think it's here and here are all my bottles so these are new bottles and some of them are ones that I have cleaned I have a blog post on how to clean and reuse your glass bottles and I will find bottles and lids for the tinctures that I need to put up there so I'm just peeling off these labels off of these old jars and you can see if I can get one up close. It leaves like, I don't know if you guys can see this, but it leaves like a sticky residue on the jar. So later when I um, go to wash the jars, I'll just take some like lemon or orange essential oil and like a cotton ball and just kind of drop the essential oils on there and rub it and it'll take off all that stickiness. Then I can wash them in the dishwasher. Make sure I got all that off and these jars will be good as new and I can reuse them when I get new herbs. Okay, so I have pulled um, all of my tinctures out of the bottom of my little herb cabinet and I've pulled out new little jars with little, or new bottles with dropper tops and I have labels right here that I'll put on them. So, I'm gonna go ahead and strain these tinctures and get them in their bottles. Let me grab a tiny, let's see if I've got a really little one. I think this funnel will work, yeah. This is just a little funnel, it's a silicone funnel that I got off Amazon. Um, so for straining my tinctures, I just use a glass measuring cup and I use a little stainless steel, it's like a fine mesh sieve and then I also use a piece of cheesecloth. This is doubled up and I will pour the tincture right in here and I'll squeeze everything out. Um, you can just use this sieve and put everything in and kind of use the back of a spoon to press the herbs out if you want. Um, but I find it much easier to use the cheesecloth, squeeze everything out, and then I can just take my cheesecloth and rinse it off in the sink and then start again with the next tincture. So that just works well for me. So that's what I'm doing. Um, 
yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started and I hope you guys can see what I'm doing. Let me scoot back a little bit. So this is yarrow. And I made this using the folk method, so pretty much just kind of eyeball things. see with all the writing but the liquid is just dripping through the cheesecloth and the sieve so I'm gonna make like a little bundle like a little pouch and then just squeeze and so some super tiny herb particles will come out of through the cheesecloth and through the sieve and into your liquid if you want it completely free of all herb particles, you can run this liquid um, through like an unbleached coffee filter to catch all of the little particles, and then you can bottle it up. All right. So there we go. So I'm gonna take the yarrow tincture that I have, and I'm gonna add this to it. Probably gonna need another bottle. Yeah, because I have a lot of tincture here and that was only, I think that was a two ounce bottle. Yeah, so I think I made four ounces of most of these. And sometimes I overfill them. <laughs> so I kind of make a little bit of a mess when I'm doing this. So these two are yarrow. I need to put a label on this one. I'm gonna wash them off, clean this up. I'm just gonna throw this in the sink and I'll wash it and I'll throw this away. And I'm going to compost the herbs that I strained and then rinse everything out and start again with my next tincture. Yarrow's done and everything's washed off, so I'm just gonna keep going with decanting all these tinctures or straining them and putting them in their bottles, labeling them, and then I'll get them in the apothecary. some of the powders before I throw them away and I'm gonna make some like peanut butter balls but I'm gonna kind of make fat balls or fat bombs I think that's what they're called um, where people use coconut oil and um, I have seen like chocolate fat bombs where you take like some honey or some sort of a healthy sweetener and use coconut oil and like cacao powder and you mix that up and you freeze them and those are really good but what I'm gonna do today is just mix my peanut butter, my honey, and my coconut oil together with some of these powders. Make like a really thick kind of dough that holds together and I'm gonna roll them in little balls and then I'll just eat those a few times a day if I want. Um, 
my constitution, I am a pit of bad on constitution, so I tend to be drier anyway. So having these little bits of healthy fats in the foods that I'm eating is really helpful for um, staying hydrated because hydration isn't just water, it's healthy fat as well. Your cells are made up of fat and you need to um, keep a good level, I guess, of healthy fats in your body as well as water to stay hydrated. And so I can tell when I start getting dehydrated, especially in the fall and early winter season, um, that is also vata season, which is, tends to be drier and colder. So um, I'm gonna just, I'm just kind of eyeballing this. This is not measured. Um, I think I have maybe an eighth of a cup of coconut oil. I am going to add um, peanut butter and honey, raw honey to taste. And then I'm gonna add my powders in, just taste a little bit and see what I think I need more of and then just kind of go from there. So I am going to try to do about two parts of this ginseng root powder to one part ginkgo powder because I want more ginseng because ginseng is an adaptogen and this winter is like the season. It's, it corresponds with the water element and so adaptogens are really great during um, this season to help you like, you know, in winter you're supposed to be kind of hibernating and resting. Um, and so adaptogens kind of help restore and strengthen your body and so this is just like a perfect season to incorporate adaptogens I usually use I usually use ashwagandha because it's a really good one for my pitta constitution Whew, those powders but I have this ginseng root powder and I don't want it to go to waste so I'm gonna try it all right so I've got peanut butter coconut oil honey and my powders in and I'm just gonna kind of mix all that together can you guys see this kind of messy and I'm just gonna stir and try to incorporate this and then I'm gonna taste it and see if I need to add anything else. Now, if you store these in the refrigerator, they will harden up because of the coconut oil in there. I'm going to keep mine at room temperature, um, so they'll be nice and soft. Oh, yum. That is really, really tasty. I actually think I want to double this batch and make a bunch of it. Okay, I'm going to do that. I'm going to melt some more coconut oil. I'll go ahead and add more honey. And that's good. Honey, I'm um, going to use the rest of this peanut butter. And more of the herbs. This is actually too soft for me to roll into balls just yet. So I'm gonna need quite a bit more herbs, I think, to help make it a little bit more firm. This is sort of at an electuary stage. An electuary is where you mix honey with powdered herbs and you take them that way. Um, but you can easily just mix it with any kind of nut butter. And again, you can add in different kinds of fats to give it a better flavor maybe, or add more health benefits to it, like I said, with the, the, the dryness and eating healthy fats in your diet, which is what I'm doing right now. And I'm making a mess, but I'm never super clean when I am doing stuff in the kitchen. Okay, that's good. So, I'm gonna melt some coconut oil in the stove and add that in, and then I'll come back and mix a little bit more.
any, I'm just gonna stick it in like um, like a glass jar with um, one of those clamp on kind of lids and just set it out and I'll just take a spoon and eat some of it three times a day like you would in a lectuary instead of trying to roll it into balls because I'm thinking it's still gonna be a little too mushy. Um, if I don't use, if I don't use peanut butter or coconut oil and you make like a really thick dough with honey and powdered herbs and you roll them into balls, those are called pastilles. It's like an electuary except it's not runny, it's kind of firm and you can store those for a good while. I love using those for like sore throat cough drop kind of things. Um, I actually have a video which I'll link to in the description box below where I showed how to make those for a sore throat. And those are really easy to do. This is just more for like a yummy little treat in the middle of the day. Yeah, now I could probably roll that into a ball. Yeah, so see, but it's kind of mushy. Like it's not really gonna stay. It's a little too soft. Anyway. Mmm, that's super yummy. All right. I think that's what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to stick it in one of my glass st storage containers and then I'm just going to like pinch off a piece or grab a spoon and pull a big chunk out and eat it a few times a day. Um, ginseng is really great for energy. It can help, again, the adaptogens just kind of really strengthening your body. Um, it can also help if you feel anxiety and so like around the holidays if you need um, if you tend to be like a little anxious, ginseng can be a really great herb if it's um, a good fit for you. Now, this one I believe is Siberian ginseng, which is a little bit different than American ginseng, but they're pretty much used interchangeably. So um, I'm just gonna try to use the rest of that. And I think that that would be a really good combination, the ginkgo and the ginseng for the last few weeks of winter a few last like several weeks of winter okay so I'm just gonna stick it in this storage container here and leave it sitting out somewhere where I can get to it each day and that way I won't forget it either like if it's sitting out I'll see it and I'll remember to take it you could even like add nuts or raisins or like chia seeds or anything into this to give it like a crunch. You could add um, coconut flakes. Um, yeah, there's so many different ways to make any kind of like herb ball with nut butters or whatever. They're, it's really easy and you really can't go wrong as long as it tastes good and you, you know, you kind of get your herb portions where you want them. Um, you don't have to have like an exact recipe. So that's really easy. Anyway, so I hope you guys enjoyed seeing this kind of chaotic way of me putting this leftover powder to use. Um, it's better than just throwing it out with the compost pile. So hopefully get some good, good properties out of this stuff, which has been kind of old. But anyway, we'll see. So at this point, I have my apothecary cleaned out or the, the, the cabinet, the herb storage area. I've got all of that cleaned out. I have a list of herbs that I'm going to reorder. I have taken my labels off. I need to clean off the jars and wash those. I've decanted all of the tinctures, except I think three in my um, cabinet there. And I've used the last little bit of these herbs. I'm trying to think what else I need to do. I think all that's left for me to do is go to Mountain Rose Herbs website and place my order, use my coupon code, and get my birthday discount and then when my herbs come I will hopefully I'm sure I'm sure by the time my herbs come I will have all clean jars and I will relabel them um, and have new herbs to make more tinctures with or tea blends or syrups or whatever I end up doing with the herbs that I order so <laughs>